Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, weiss-sound.com and weissadvice.com. This video is going to be kind of a mix of technique and philosophy, a little bit of both, but I think it sums up kind of how I teach music production and engineering in a very different light than maybe a lot of people do. So I'm setting up a video here to do a tutorial on multiband compression, and in the process of that I'm experimenting with different ways to demonstrate something. So I'm thinking to myself, I've got this record here, and I'll play a little bit of it. I think, okay, what would be a good way to demonstrate a basic idea of multiband compression? It'd be like, okay, if I take this beat and I wanted to isolate just the upper mid range that's in that snare and attenuate it significantly, then that would probably be a pretty clear demonstration because you would hear things stay in the same place, but you would hear the snare dull. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, what I want to do is do a really exaggerated version of how I would normally approach something like that. Now, I don't even think that this record necessarily needs that kind of upper mid-range attenuation when the snare hits, but I wanna go completely the other way and do a demonstration where it's so obvious that it would sound terrible. I would never do it that way unless I was specifically trying to point it out and show a clear difference. So, I, uh, I set it up and I have this, this band here in the upper mids at about 3.3K and I've got the attack set as fast as it can go I've got the release set, you know, on the faster side, but in the middle. I've got the range turned all the way down, and I basically I'm going to end up sort of squashing the life out of the upper mid range of the snare, which in theory should sound terrible. So let's uh, let's set that up. Let's reconstruct it here. So first of all, I want to go find my target zone. So there's all that really nice snap from the snare, which is definitely a really good quality of the snare. I really like the, the snap that it has, uh, part of a good sound selection right there. So to really kill that snap, I want to turn the attack to zero. If I felt like this was too upper mid rangey, by the way, I would keep the attack kind of on the faster side because I'm trying to catch the snare, uh, but might even go a little slower than where it's at just because I want some of that like leading edge of the snare to cut through and really still have that like very sharp defined hip hop kind of an attack. But I'm trying to demonstrate something obvious and so I, and basically trying to ruin this. So I'm turning it to 0% here. And then for the release, probably would want to keep it on the faster side, typically speaking, but maybe I'll slow it down because this way the record doesn't release in time. So that should also make it sound terrible. And then lastly, I got to set my threshold and how much compression I actually want to do. So I've got a little handy meter here. I'm going to use that to get my starting point for my threshold. So we can see where the snare is showing up on the meter versus where everything else in the upper mid-range is living. And you can see that the snare is pretty much owning the upper mid-range. So I've set the threshold pretty far below where the snare is, but a little bit above everything else, because I'm ta just trying to target when the snare hits. That should make it pretty obvious. Uh, and now I want to go over to my controls here. So I'm going to do a fast knee, or a hard knee, because I want to leave everything alone going to the, the hard side, maybe leaving it a little bit curved down just so I can catch like the whole of the snare. And then for the ratio, let's go for a higher ratio because we want to make this really obvious. And now I'm just going to chuck the range all the way down. So it should be pretty, pretty bad. So now we listen to it and listen to the damage we've done. And now I have two thoughts, right? Let's before and after it, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna share my two thoughts here, and this is gonna get to the overall point that I really want to make. All right, so we lose all that upper mid range in the snare, and my first thought is, wow, what a dramatic change. It sounds like a completely different record in a lot of ways because the snare changed so much. And then my second thought is, I kind of like it. <laughs> like, it's weird, it's different, 
but it kind of works, right? Now, don't worry about it before you get before you get angry and, and get your dislikes down. If you didn't like that sound, it's okay. We're going to get to that. But just listen to it with an open mind. Pretend that I didn't do anything, and this is kind of the way the record just sounded. Kind of sounds like it could have been intentional, right? Now, you might not like that sound. You might say, what are you talking about, Matt? That sounds absolutely terrible. You wouldn't be wrong. But you might actually kind of like that sound. Like, yes, it sounds very lo-fied. It sounds deliberately lo-fied. It sounds bit crushed, actually, in a weird way. And I kind of dig that. I'm into that style. I really like lo-fi music in general. I always like the tones, the textures, the unpredictable frequency placements of things. To me, it makes things sound interesting, and I like that. So the point to all of that is twofold. The first is that when I'm teaching, the real heart of my teaching and the real idea behind Weiss advice is not just to teach what I do. Because if if I'm just teaching what I do, basically what I'm doing is encouraging other people to be copies of me. And that's not really where I want to go with it. I do think that it's fine for people to copy me and to learn from me and do the things that I'm doing. I think that I've got a lot of great techniques to share and a lot of great ideas to emulate. But I'm more interested in making people be the best them. And so if, if you have a different aesthetic than this, that's okay. It's fine to look at something like this and think, this isn't doing it for me. But it's also fine to look at it and be like, wait, there's something really interesting here. So I'm always trying to teach to those different mindsets. And my feeling is, is whatever your aesthetic is, it works. There's no such thing as a bad aesthetic. You just have to commit to it. And ultimately, the end listeners are going to listen to the music they like. And that's going to be influenced by people having different aesthetics. That's why some people like metal, and some people like classical, and some people like rap, and some people like pop. And that's fine. That's good. Now, the other thing that I want to get at here is that there's a very, very important underlying idea and principle that I stress so much in my Weiss Advice content, and that is sometimes when we think that we have a good idea, sometimes when we have a preconceived notion, or a bad idea, but when we have a strong preconceived notion, sometimes the music reveals itself in a very different way. So in this example, I was doing this with the expectation that this would sound horrible. And in many ways, it is fulfilling that expectation. But what I wasn't expecting was to do this and to like it, right? But I'm keeping an open mind toward what I'm hearing. And because I'm keeping an open mind toward what I'm hearing, I'm allowing myself not to mix with my eyes. That is something that we all suffer from and we all have to get away from. But I'm mixing with my ears and more importantly, I'm mixing with my feeling, my gut. That's the principle that I really try to get down to, which is hard to teach. Am I gonna sneeze? Oh no, it was a non-sneeze sneeze. sneeze. There have been countless times where I've been working on a record and in my mind I go, okay, I'm hearing a problem, let me address it, and in the process of trying to fix it, I'll maybe like, you know, grab a bell boost to sort of isolate a frequency, thinking I'm going to hear the frequency and hate it, and then come across the area that I think it is, and all of a sudden I love what I'm hearing while, when it's being boosted up. And because I'm keeping an open mind toward things, I sort of allow myself to go, you know what, I had a preconceived notion of what I thought was going to work, but now I'm doing something and it's working completely the opposite way as expected, but it's great, so I'm going to keep it. And that's a really, really important idea and principle that we need to be working into our mixing. So now, how does that play out? How does that apply to this record? Well, if I go in here and I want to make something out of the two track, let's say I only had the two track, I would take these settings and I would say, okay, if this is working for me, can I refine it to make it a little bit more polished? And I would say, yes, I can.
So if I just isolate that center of the upper mids a little bit more and allow some of the, the mids to low mids of the snare to breathe a little bit better and kind of just get it focused in and then back off the amount that I'm doing, it creates this sort of interesting, like, really, like a, like a drum that's been pitch shifted and pushed hard through an SP-1200. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting from this. Now, I also have the track outs for this record. So if I go into the mix, I can keep that concept for the snare and I can apply this idea just to the snare itself and work the record around it to make the tones and, and textures match what I'm getting with this sort of like, you know, just sort of slapped on effect, I can actually do it in an organized and orchestrated way and create the best of both worlds by really targeting and focusing on what I'm doing. But the concept is coming from expecting one thing, but actually getting something else. All right, guys, if you dig this video, hit that like button. If you like this channel, hit subscribe with the notification bell clicked so you get notified. If you have any questions about any of the ideas that I'm talking about or any of the things that I've demonstrated here, drop something in the comments section below. Or if you just want to say hi, then, you know, drop something in the comment section below. And of course, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. And I will catch you next time.